Seemingly walking out of the room. Okay. I keep seeing you take a drink and it's making me thirsty. Sorry. I'm like, mm, that looks so good. Now, I'm going to let you choose between these two, um, Jamie. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross or Terrence McKenna. The, the guy who was into psychedelics. Is that the LSD guy? I think. No, that, that was... Um, I'm blanking. Tell to be old. Well, Terrence McKenna, I think he really believed in like opening up the mind and, and the pineal gland and all that with DMT and other things. But I've heard about it from the blog, about him from the blog members. But gosh, I can't for the life of me remember what they said. Or also, there's uh, Elizabeth Kubler Ross, too. Or Jack Kevorkian. You know, you choose. Wow, he'd be so intriguing. Yeah. Uh, Eric's here, and he's introducing me to someone whose name we did not mention today. <laughs> oh, okay, that's fine. Who you got there, buddy? He said Sonny Bono. Sonny Bono. Is he on the list? Uh, yeah, he's on the list. That's fine. Okay. But next time, Jamie gets to pick. All right. Hello, Mr. Bono. It's his voice. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, he's so polite. Aww. He's got a, a blazer on and a tie. Mm -hmm. like oh, he's relaxed. wow. Um, he says, hello to you. He says, thank you for putting this together. This has really turned out to be a wonderful experience. Um, he said that he met Eric at a music gathering. Wow. And Eric mentioned to him that we were, you were putting together a book. And Sonny said that he was very interested in participating. Oh. So wonderful. this is why you're here today. It's because you just met each other. Okay. That's so bad. That Eric, is so good. Eric reaches over and kind of taps Sonny on the shoulder and goes, yeah, and it's ski season coming up too. Oh, no. You're so bad. He oh. takes the joke really well. Sonny, he's not... Um, oh, I can imagine. He, was a, he is such a delightful person. Uh, Sonny, what, what kind of belief system did you abide by when you were here? Um, you are cutting up pretty bad. Okay, how about now? What kind, of, what kind of belief system did you have, Sonny? Uh, he's... He was joking before. He said he lived through four marriage. He, he lived through four marriages. Mm. He could definitely live through this small interview with your son. Oh. So pretty much you can dish out, dish out anything that you want. Of course. He, he can handle it. Uh, Sonny says that he grew up in an Italian family. Uh, he said he was raised um, Roman, Roman Catholic. Because you really didn't have a choice. He said, nobody sat down with you and my family and said, here are the belief systems. What would you like to choose? So no smorgasbord. None. Nothing. He said it was what you were given. It was what our family had always been. And mm. it was what you were going to do, too. Okay. He said, so it's instilled in a lot of the choices that I still make today are the practices of the Roman Catholic world. Interesting. Did they change? Did your belief change in any way after you crossed over? He just talk oh no, he was just talking about it as he got older. Scien scientists. Scientology. Scientology. Mm -hmm. Scientology. That he got into sci Scientology. Okay. And it helped him find a voice to a lot of the things that he was experiencing that the Roman Catholic world wasn't open to. And he said, "Now after I passed away, he said, what a relief." Hmm. Wait, she's so funny. Kind of bizarre. What a relief. Aww. It was nice to know that the confinement that I was taught all this time that should go along with religion just didn't exist. 
And he said, it was such a joy to me to know that you could behave the way you wish, love the way you wish, experience God the way you wish, and you're always going to be in the right. Oh, that's awesome. Eric goes, that's so awesome. You should make a song about it. So yeah. Sunny. Yeah. Oh, boy. They're already fast friends. Sonny, tell me what your transition was like. I can imagine it was pretty quick. <laughs> he goes, I tell you, I tell you, <laughs> his hands are up, real short gestures. I tell you, I did not see the, I did not see the tree coming. Well, of course not. Yeah. Right, he was in the ski accident. That's yeah. why the ski joke was funny. Oh, yeah. He, he was not out of control and not able to steer away. Yeah, okay. It was not that kind of accident. It was complete surprise. Okay. Okay. Oops. Okay. Uh, oh. All right. Sorry about that. So, um, uh, can you describe your surrounding? So, so the transition was quick. Bam! You were all of a sudden in the afterlife. Is that what you're saying? No. He says I lingered in the body for some time. Oh, okay. I can remember seeing the the white of the snow, the white of the snow. And, um, and then I saw white, mm-hmm. again, white, but I thought it was still the snow, but then I recognized that I wasn't lying down. I was somehow upright. I was standing, oh. uh, but it was none of the surroundings of the mountain that I was on, but everything was white. He said it went from the white snow on the earth to the white light in the heavens. Oh, interesting. Was it very painful or hopefully not? No, he has no recollection of pain. He's telling me that he remembers uh, saying again and again in his head, you know, what the hell was that? It was such a quick surprise. He didn't have any time to feel the pain or identify what caused it or what was about to happen. Mm. All he could have time to say was, what was that? What the hell was that? Oh, my God. Eric laughed. Uh, can you describe your... The... <laughs> he said, about that time when you realized you were upright, everything else started to happen as well. You know, where you start to realize that you're not in pain and that you're not hurting and that it felt more like a dream than it mm. felt like in life. And so then you start to wonder, how did I get here? And that's when it dawns on you that something has gone wrong, but you don't want to cry about it. You don't feel sad about it. You don't hurt about it. He straightens up his jacket. He said, you embrace it, and you embrace it not because you know that's what the thing to do is. That's not the next step. It overcomes you in such a way that every part of your body, not just the outside but the inside, he said it just drops before you and wants to embrace everything that's around you. Mm. He said it has to be one of the most beautiful experiences I've ever had in my life. Mm. He said more so than being on stage, more so than being on TV, more so than my children Wow. It says, I love my children. Aww. Children. Uh, he's telling me he has three. I don't know. I'll have, to, I'll have to check. Well, I don't have to check. I'll take your word for it. Now, what about, was it your destiny to die when and how you did? <laughs> I wouldn't have consciously known that. He no. said somebody had to come and tell me that. Oh. And he says, I, I couldn't be more, or great, more grateful that it was a fast transition. Mm. Because everybody around, around me knew that I did not want to have a slow death. He said, I spent a lot of my life trying to get away from pain. Mm-hmm. And one of my fears was is that I would have to face it through a long, suffering death. Oh. I'm so glad you didn't. Eric says, didn't you used to do drugs? He said he did. He did drugs to get away from, yeah, the pain in daily life. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, M name. M. Not meth. Uh, MDMA? Uh, like ecstasy? MSNBC? No, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Ma- Marijuana. 
He laughs. Uh, he said everybody did that. Oh, okay. Um, metamine, metamine, metamine. Morphine. 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 Oh, wow. Okay, okay. How do you say it again? Morphine. It's just two syllables? Yeah, morphine. Is it something else, maybe? It's okay. We, the way we... he says it, it kind of sounds like it's three. Like morphine. Morphine. Oh, okay. Um, so why was it your destiny then, sweetie? Uh, he said, you know, I think we all have an expiration date. And what was more valuable to me was to leave a greater impact on the world, my work, the safety of the people, the rules that I was trying to implement, and, um, and, and the ideals I was trying to protect. And often we can stand in our own way. We think we're doing our best work for ourselves and for the people around us in our environment when really we're getting in our own way and we're stopping ourselves from progressing. When if you could just leave, then people value the work that you've done mm. and take it to the next level. Whereas mm. if I was still there, it would not have gone to the next level. Well, they might have just concentrated on your personal life instead of your work, which is very often the case nowadays. Oh, he just kind of rolls. He goes, oh. He said, exactly. He says, when did politics become personal? Yes. And you were a politician as well. What do you think about the state of the world now? Eric laughs. He goes, um, politics became personal when movie stars started becoming politicians. Exactly. And so Sonny starts laughing. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> he says, well, I think I can do more work here to help the state of the world. Oh, good. And that is what I'm focused on. So that's your, that's your work there. Great. Can you describe what your afterlife looks like? We know kind of what you do, your life's work there, but what does it look like? Do you live in a house? Do you... He'll tell you, but he was just saying that you don't even have to finish school to make a difference in the world. And then Eric goes, that's the dropout. Oh. He wanted to talk to people who passed away that dropped out of school. Oh. <laughs> and if we talk to uh, McKenna later on, we'll be doing somebody who drops acid. So <laughs> it'll all be good. Um, so tell me, Sonny, what about your afterlife? What's it He's like? really good at remembering the questions and staying on task and also joking. Wow. A really good um, speaker or interviewer. He'll just bring it right back around and deliver it. He said that his environment of where he is now consists mostly of being... <laughs> So you're not trapped. That's just the word you're using. Okay. Uh, being trapped in the UN room and in conferences and meetings throughout different government levels of United States and through Europe. Mm. Uh, but he's not trapped. He chooses to be there. He says there's just so many that if you are in spirit and you are trying to follow through with one ideal, mm -hmm. one law, one motion, that you need to be in every meeting to see who are the people who are influencing it the most, and then mm. that is who you choose to work with. Eric says, so it sounds like you switched more to a political world than an entertaining world, and Sonny answers, yes. Well, there's a little bit of bleed through on that one. It, because uh, a lot of politicians are actors, anyway. Uh -huh. You have to be. Got you. All right, now what insights uh, did you gain given the, your new perspective in the afterlife? There's a lot of dummies in the human race. I know, I'm one of them. I can vouch for that. He said, I don't necessarily think that I would put that label on you. You're searching for a greater cause and not searching for the rule or the definition to put with it. Okay. Those are the dummies. Oh, wow. He's such a brilliant man. Were you here to learn anything? He said, I know I was here to try to learn commitment and love. Mm. As I found it many times. <laughs> Oh, I, you're funny. He says, I couldn't keep the commitment. Oh, that's so funny. 
What about to teach? Were you here to teach anything? Yes. That's probably the biggest part yes. of your life. Yeah. He said that that was my greatest passion. It what it's what drove me to continue working and continue living. Good. And what was that? What were you here to teach? You've probably mentioned it in some part already, but. Uh, <clears throat> he's here to teach the dummies. And then he quickly gives me this flash image in my head, one of those yellow books. Oh, yeah, something or other for dummies? Yeah, the afterlife for dummies. Oh, okay. Well, I, maybe we'll have to steal that title when we write our book. <laughs> afterlife for dummies. Are you there with me still? Uh-oh. Your Jenny? image is stuck. Okay, yours is too, but sometimes it unsticks, so. Hopefully it's not when I'm stretching my face out, right? No, no. You look cross-eyed, but no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, it, it, it'll unfreeze. It'll unfreeze. Um, so what were you here to teach then if you had to put uh, Afterlife for Dummies to, to teach about what? Oh, no. He says that oh, he good, was good. here to, um, to teach the people who are living about the quality of afterlife so that they would change who they were or are while they're alive. Oh, awesome. Do you have any regrets? Or don't let me interrupt you. Yeah. Uh, no, no. He okay. was done. You said regrets. He uh, teasingly reached in. He pulled his jacket back and reached into his pocket. He was like, let me go through a few. Oh, no. What was your biggest one? Let's stick with the biggest They're one. They're all small. They're all small. Uh, the biggest one is... He said he was really bad at saying goodbye. He was really bad at making closures. Mm. And because of that lack of understanding how to do it, he really burned some bridges. And he said he, he really regrets that. He never okay. really wanted to hurt anybody's feelings. Okay. That's a big, that's a small one. They forgive you. You're a loving man. What was your proudest accomplishment? <laughs> Eric leans over and goes, learning how to ski. <laughs> Oh, 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 Eric, have a heart, baby. But Sonny thinks it's so funny. Oh, they know like each other. He knows, yeah. Same type of humor that he has, oh. too. They've just bantered like that the whole time. It's pretty funny. <laughs> oh. Sonny just doesn't even break a smile and turns and says, Oh, well, that was a good day in my life, but it probably wasn't the best. Oh, no. Well, you know, Eric, it wasn't like you were a big, uh, 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 an accomplished skier, Mr. Half Norwegian. <laughs> oh, Eric goes, stab me in the heart. Uh -huh. so, he says, Sonny says that one of his, his greatest, if he had to pin it down to a single moment, it's actually when he became nominated into office. Oh, yeah. Because he knew that he would finally have that chance. To have his voice heard. And I, I bet you that's still, you, looking back from your new perspective, do you, you probably still consider that your highest, your biggest accomplishment? He said, I do. It requires votes from the people. And yeah. he said, it's so touching that I could finally feel what community was really like. That support was going to stay with me till the end of my days. God, we need you back. Dude, seriously. Now, what past life affected the last one uh, that you had? <laughs> That was my turn to do that. <laughs> uh, um, it, it, it's so he said a past life. He said he and Eric had discussed this at the gathering that they were at because uh, they thought it was such a, a profound question because it's not something that uh, the the hum human would ask another human. Uh -huh. And he goes, let alone does a human have that information to recognize, oh, that's what I did before, and this is what I want to do now. He's talking about being a French female aristocrat in the 1600s, 1630, uh, associated to the royal palace in Paris, Lady... So do you, so you were like a lady of the court? Oh, lady in waiting or something? 
lady in waiting? Maybe, I don't know. I just watched the Robin Hood cartoon with my kids every once in a while, so I think there's a lady in waiting. I don't know. Um, so he was always in the high end world, the riches. He was always in the traveling, the best way, the easiest way. And he said, most importantly, being a woman, you weren't allowed to have really political knowledge nor political input. It was very removed. Oh. And he, said he so enjoyed that life, being a rebel and being a woman and sitting and discussing with the men. And she seems to be the only woman in the room. And I see men in um, really nice fabric suits. They're not tuxedos, but really nice fabric suits, blues and creams and gold colors. They're smoking cigars. And this woman is propped in the middle, looks like on an ottoman with mm. no back. And she's listening and engaging with them in mm. political jargon. And, and So you really like, mean court? You don't mean like court, uh, like the royalty judicial. back then? Okay, I understand. Yeah, uh, not judicial. It, okay. And so in that life, he actually gained so much knowledge about... Um, the, the royal life and okay where the the men are the men in war what's happening the decisions between countries that he on several occasions was asked for opinion and insight but always under private never was she sexually harassed hmm. never was she ever abused um she was treated almost as a entertainment value but with such high knowledge and loved that life and wanted to do it again, but in the right way to where you were the man in the right arena and could have both of those worlds. Oh. I got just that. That's awesome. Now, from, uh, Eric, do you have any questions before we ask if he has any last words, so to speak? Eric says, no, no, I'm good. He says, we're going to go play later. Oh, good. Yeah, y'all can go skiing. Sonny goes, now you've got your mom started and on it. Well, where do you think he gets it? Eric um, says he'll learn how to... Yeah. <laughs> He's laughing. T teach Sonny how to snowboard, because you were a pretty good snowboarder. Sonny agrees to it. All right, now from your newfound perspective, do you have any messages for humanity? Or do you have any messages for family members like Cher or one of your children or your family as a whole? He said, or my wife. Okay. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't know he had another wife. The screen is doing funky stuff. I, told I know. You. I know. I had to figure this out. But it still works pretty good. You look great. <laughs> um, the thing he would like to tell everybody is that every voice counts. Every voice matters. Okay. And he said, I don't really mean that in a larger political scale, as it would sound. But I do mean it as within your family structures, mm -hmm. within your friendship structures. And he said, it's very important to vote. Yes. If you want to make the changes, you have to vote. Please teach your children political viewpoints and have them vote. Okay. Good. He said, I would love a program to start in all the public schools, all the schools, wherever, that they learn the politics and within the school system, they vote. And then after the 18 and above vote, the school can compare if their votes were equivalent to what the mass of the uh, United States thought it to be true. Because this is the only way we're going to teach this habit to our children. Hmm. Okay. And he says, my family knows I love them. He says, I, I kiss them every day. Oh. Mm. Every day. And he goes, bless my wife. She has stood up and taken care of our, our kids. And she has... Um, Eric, come on. Stop. <laughs> oh, it's, it's strobing. 
is total strobe, and then it's um, layered. I well, wish I could show you. It's it looks just good. It looks good from this side. So it's probably them. Their energy is probably so high, especially yeah, the two of them together. He said that his wife has stood up and is helping the causes that he started. Oh, how wonderful! So you know, his his life is very full still. Oh, that's great. He's thanking you for the opportunity today. Oh. He said you have a wonderful son. Oh, thank you. And I'm glad he has a wonderful friend. <laughs> he said, yes, he does. And it kind of touches his, his chest. He reaches up and he pats Eric on the shoulder.